has changed because of the pandemic, and one of the biggest is how we work. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to all. I hope you all saw our short video. So today we won't be discussing about the pandemic, nor our struggles or life during or after pandemic. Today we'll be discussing on one of the most debated or discussed to topic post COVID period. Is permanent work from home or work at office, which is the best option for the career development of IT professionals? So before we begin, you would have noticed, uh, we'll be sharing a poll question with everyone. So I request you all to kindly uh, vote in your choices so that we also know uh, what are your thoughts about our topic. So I hope you would have seen the poll questions on your screen by now. So kindly share your thoughts there. Thank you. So Finjin ensures to initiate and promote greater dialogue and interaction amongst Finjin types at all levels on issues that matter through regular webinar sessions called FinCast. So normally these sessions are open only to Finjin types. However, today we would like to thank the Kerala State IT Parks and InfoPark for helping us bring our initiative FinCast to a wider audience. A warm welcome to all our participants from InfoPark, TechnoPark and beyond. Today, we all are gathered here not for a usual presentation or panel discussion, but for a debate. Today, we will hear opposing points of view about a very interesting and controversial topic, the impact of working from home on the career of IT professional. So as we get ready to begin our session today, I would like to introduce the moderator for the debate, Deepu Prakash. So Deepu is one of the enthusiastic, tech-savvy, vibrant, and dedicated leaders overlooking innovation, quality, and delivery at Finchit. He has worked with technology and innovation across Europe and India for over two decades and currently provides technology and operational leadership to a broad set of functions in Finchit Global Solutions as the Senior Vice President for Process and Technology. Today, however, he is not here to share his views. He is here, like each one of us, to learn more about different perspectives on this important topic. Being a leader with an unbiased and optimistic view, Deepu is one of the best moderators we can have on board today. Please welcome our moderator for the day, Deepu Prakash. Over to you, Thank Deepu. Thank you, Thank you um, for that very flattering introduction. I hope to live up to it. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. You know, a couple of years ago, many of us packed our laptops and our desktops uh, and converted our bedrooms and living rooms and kitchens into temporary offices. The reality is we had no choice. But now, as we treat the pandemic as endemic, most people in the world have returned to their workplaces on factory floors and shops and restaurants and banks. People are back at work. However, the IT sector, in the IT sector, returning to office is still a very uh, controversial topic. Most discussions have been about the impact on the economy, productivity, convenience, and cost savings. But today, our debate narrows down to a very different aspect, the career growth of IT professionals. What has been the impact of work from home on career growth? What are the risks to career growth of working from home? And are these risks worth taking? As an IT professional, what should you do to fast track your career? Should you continue working from home on a permanent basis or should you return to office? And this is our motion for today. Let it be resolved, work from home is not good for the career development of IT professionals. Now, the interesting thing with any FinCast debate is that it is you who decide who wins this debate. And you do this in a very simple way. You do this by casting two votes. The first one at the beginning of this debate, which many of you may have already casted. And the second one at the end of this debate, after you have heard all the arguments. Why two votes? Because that's how we figure out who the winning team is. It is the team that changes most minds between the first and the second vote. All right, then. It's time now to meet our debaters. We have a wonderful panel for you here today, all of whom are directly impacted by this topic. First, arguing that work from home is indeed good for the career development of IT professionals, please welcome 
Tony Joseph, a senior manager at Finjet. Tony is not only managing a team of B2B sales professionals, but is also managing some of Finjet's key accounts across the globe. And joining Tony on the panel, arguing against our motion for the day, is Alphonse Mary Xavier. Alphonse is not only a senior HR business partner in Finjet's PeopleOps team, but also drives LND initiatives across our organization. Welcome, Tony and Alphonse. Supporting the motion that work from home is not good for the careers of IT professionals is Sujo Jacob. Sujo heads the project office at Fingent and is also a member of Fingent's core team. The team that helps Fingent's senior leadership make key policy decisions. Joining Sujo on the team, arguing for the motion, is Ranjit Murlitharan. As a senior project manager and team leader, Ranjit has managed several key projects for Fingent. Welcome, Sujo and Ranjit. Before we start, let's take a quick look at the results from at the results from the votes that you, the audience today, have casted at the beginning. Sharanya, do we have the results from our first poll? Yes, they were sharing. So these are the results. Wow. So yeah, looks like we have an audience that is fairly undecided. So debaters, um, it, it feels almost like an even split you have a very good opportunity to change minds today. There's 30% uh, people who are undecided about work from home is good for the careers of IT professionals or not. And with that in mind, let's get started with our opening statements, the first round for today, where each debater will have three minutes to make their case uninterrupted. Once again, our motion is work from home is not good for the careers of IT professionals. Arguing against that motion, please welcome first, Tony Joseph. Thank you, Deepo. So, hey folks, nice to meet you guys. And, and really appreciate this opportunity to be a part of this uh, debate. And I, I really hope that, uh, you know, every one of us, you know, can have some good takeaways uh, from this debate. So, um, this debate has been conducted online, right? All of us are, you know, based in different, you know, locations, you know, probably even different cities right now. Let me ask you a question, right, to the audience. Wouldn't you value more what we have to say and share here rather than, you know, where we are physically located? Um, it's, it's a rhetorical question, but yeah, chew on that for a little bit. Now, to be very honest, it is, I mean, I, I find it very ironical that of all people like IT professionals, us, you know, we are having this debate about this motion because I, I feel work from home should be our default, right? And, and if you ask me why, you know, we are within the IT or the, you know, outsourcing, you know, industry where the, the, the foundation or, or the whole principle of this industry is about the value being delivered rather than, you know, where people are really located. Now, uh, coming to this, you know, uh, motion like work from home is not good for uh, the careers of IT professionals. I, you know, obviously totally, you know, disagree with it. If, if you if you think about it, you know, home is a place that you are very comfortable with and uh, you are so used to it. So that, you know, uh, in itself puts you in a very positive, you know, frame of mind. Your, you know, mental, you know, uh, comfort and things like that. Are, are pretty good and that ensures that you can you know work you know properly and and be the most productive that you can be and obviously being good at your work is a prerequisite for any person to move on to the next level or the next you know position or progress in their career now this might seem you know very you know trivial because you know traditionally we don't you know probably place a lot of importance when it comes to mental health but let me point you in the, in, in the direction of this particular, you know, stat uh, from a, a Reich's United States stress report that was done in 2019, you know, pre-COVID uh, times. In 2019, 94% of American workers reported experiencing stress at their workplace. Stress is not a good thing. It really limits, you know, what you can do and you have to continuously watch your back or, you know, it, it leads to diminished, you know, productivity and even, you know, worse, you know, mental health. And work from home does take away a lot of stress from that. You know, you are in your own environment that, uh, you know, you are 
you know, super used to, right? Now, another factor, if you consider uh, with respect to career progression, uh, and this factor cannot be undermined uh, or undervalued is skill development and learning. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a manager myself. So I know, uh, you know, if someone from my team has to move up, they have to skill up and they have to continuously learn and uh, take on new responsibilities and be prepared for the next level. Now, if you look at the stats from the LinkedIn Workplace Learning Report 2020, 76% of learners believed that learning is the key to a successful career. But on the flip side, 49% of the employees don't have the time to spare on learning. Now, it's not a secret that working from home saves you a significant amount of time because you don't have to, you know, get to work in the sense you don't have to travel, you, you don't have to get ready for the work, and uh, you, you don't have to spend you know, time basically rejuvenating from the whole stress and the time and uh, the fatigue you know, from being stuck in traffic and things like that. Now, another report from uh, LinkedIn that was done in you know, 2021, it says learners watch 50% more hours per learner of learning content in 2020 versus 2019. That is when we were you know, at home, working from home, people spend 50% more time on learning, which is, I think, a wonderful thing with respect to progression in your career. Now, based on these facts, it's super evident that work from home elevates an employee's mental and emotional comfort levels. And at the same time, it is you know, proven that work from home encourages people to you know, reinvest the, uh, the time that they save into themselves into learning and skilling up. And both of these aspects are critical elements for a person to progress with their career. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. So very interesting points that you brought up there, especially about the irony that the industry that champions that champions remote work is now not able to work remotely. And also the points around skill development and mental health. Now arguing in support of the motion that work from home is not good for career development, please welcome Sujo Jacob. Thank you so much, Deepu. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Kerala IT, for giving us this opportunity. Our focus for today's discussion is career growth of IT professionals. To gain more control on your own career development, there are five essential steps that you can take called the five P's of career management. The five P's correspond to possibility, presence, people, perspective, and perseverance. Career development is a lifelong process so please do not lose your focus with the few short-term benefits of work from home. And remember that we are social animals and humans need humans. We need our daily dose of brain chemicals like dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins to make us happy and stay focused on our career growth. Did you know that several mental health issues like depression, anxiety, stress, and sleep problems were of increasing concern due to the pandemic-related isolation at homes? UNICEF, in their flagship report in 2021, had mentioned that the impact of pandemic on the mental health of children and young adults in India may continue for many more years. So how are you going to overcome this challenge? And we have seen a lot of other issues also with work, work from home, like lack of dedicated workspace at home, workplace disconnect due to lack of face-to-face -face interaction, lack of exercise and sunlight, which led to vitamin D deficiency, blurred work-life boundaries, multiple distractions at home, increased gender disparity, cybersecurity issues, difficulty in sharing work-related equipment, and so many more. So now I would like to highlight a few points on the importance of collaboration at workplace and its positive, starting from onboarding of an employee to the overall success of an organization. Point number one, great work culture. We are a great place to work certified company and ranked number six this year. That was possible only because we could observe the great culture followed by our seniors in the office for so many years. So if you have a very good work culture and if you want to pass it on to all, all of your employees, we need our employees in the office. Point number two, innovation and creativity. Since we have the latest technology elements like AR, VR, AI, and media elements in our projects, creative discussions and reviews during the meetings is much essential for the success of the project. 
Point number three, career progression. If you are a passionate and a hardworking employee, you will learn faster with constructive feedback and your work will get noticed much better when you are in office than at home. So let me repeat, we are social animals and we are best when we are with each other. So mentoring, coaching and collaboration for a career growth is much effective when we are in the same workplace and not at home. Thank you. Thank you, Sujo. And some very interesting points that you brought up there, um, especially about career development being a lifelong process, the cultural aspects that are so important for career development, and also aspects around innovation, coaching, and mentoring. Thank you so much. Now, arguing against the motion that work from home is not good for career development, please welcome Alphonse. Alphonse, the screen is yours. So, during the advent of pandemic, uh, and I think Dibu, you mentioned that in the intro as well, it was more about your force to work from home because we definitely wanted to keep people safe, we wanted to ensure business continuity. But now it's more about choosing work from home, right? So the play field that work is shifting. And having seen the shift from the viewpoint of an employee and as an employer, obviously, due to the role that I play, I would like to put forward thoughts on two aspects, particularly career development and career opportunities. Um, work from home has proved to be provide greater sense of autonomy. This means having the ability to be the primary decision maker of where you and how you do your work. Now, it's not about working in isolation, not about working without guidance, boundaries, supervision or collaboration, but it's about allowing people to work the way that is most conducive of their own best performance, right? So promoting what autonomy at work has improved definitely productivity, empowering employees to be self-starters, giving them ownership of their work and their environment, and providing support instead of exerting control. I would also take help a few data points here. So as per the global workplace analytics survey, the survey that have they have done on organizations in and around, there are organizations that reported remote workers up to 35 to 40 percent which more productive than their in-office counterparts. Now with stronger autonomy via location independence, there are also results that says that 40 percentage of lower quality defects, people who work from home or who has a location independence. Now, which is again a sound data supporting ownership and accountability. Second thing I would put forward is from a career opportunity perspective. Now, when we define the word workplace, right, let's be more inclusive. It's not necessarily the category of people who have every privileges to get the office. Let's also consider people who are either neurodivergent, who are physically challenged, or are primary caregivers, irrespective of gender. Or the most common things that we see now is people who are on low immunity levels. Pre-pandemic, although not intentional, we were unsure of how to include them in our traditional work settings. Well, the last two years in pandemic has shown us we can definitely accommodate them. We as a world is open to give them opportunity. Now, I will also take help of few data points here. Again, as per the Global Workplace Analytics Report, uh, more than 12% of the, the current working age population that we have is disabled. Now, there is still remaining a full three quarters of unemployed workers with disabilities, and they cite discrimination in the workplace and the lack of transportation. And yes, there are many other factors there too that prevent them from working. So with these two thoughts, I second the notion that work from home is positive impact on career growth. Thank you. Thank you, Alphonse. And Alphonse, you brought up a set of different points here, uh, ownership, accountability, all of which relate, all of which due to the autonomy that work from home brings. And you also interestingly talked about inclusion and the possibility of inclusion in workplaces, increasing workplaces, well, virtual workplaces at least increasing, uh, you know, with work from home being available. Thank you so much. Uh, now, arguing that work from home is not good for career development, uh, please welcome Ranjit Muralidhar. Ranjit, the screen is yours. Thank you for that, Deepu, and uh, also thank you for having me here. And a very good evening to everyone who has joined us here today. Now, before I go ahead and explain my stand and make my arguments, I think it's only fair that I tell you the reason why I'm on this side of the argument. Now, before the pandemic hit us and before we all started adopting this work from home mode for essentially survival, I was someone who preferred to, well, work from home mostly for the same reasons that my fellow oppositions have made already. 
But two, two and a half years after working from home in my favorite attire of, you know, bunion and boxers, I've now have a slightly different perspective. A perspective that has changed over the course of the last two years from facing different challenges and obstacles. Perspective being the key word. I think we've all been stuck in the single perspective with this tunnel vision that work from home only has advantages. We talk about saving time and money, but are we really or even effectively? Especially these days where there is a lack of clear separation between work and home. Now, think about a junior, a fresher, or someone with even just three to five years of experience. If they were to come into work and interact with hundreds of different people from, from different backgrounds, positions, and skill sets, they naturally get to learn and experience so much. The hands-on applied learning, coaching, mentoring that you get through face-to-face -face interaction and by watching experts work far outweigh certifications or tutorials, especially during the initial phases of your career. It's important that the seasoned professionals, the seniors, make sure that these juniors are not stuck in these short-term goals and think long-term. They shouldn't regret the missed opportunities in you know, five or 10 years down the lane. Same with money. You save on fuel and maybe on rent, but you need a good sustainable space to work in. Your furnitures, your coffees, your electricity bills, you know, all that adds up. Saving a little by working from home, the cost of all this. Now, I need you to ask yourself, is it really worth it? Applied Psychology had recently published a study where they confirmed that Zoom fatigue is a real thing. Over 92% of the participants in the study felt fatigue from video conferences. And there has been numerous studies over the past decade or two where, you know, showing how desk jobs lead to extreme lower back and spinal issues. These have only gotten worse since working from home since they're all confined to a chair for far longer than we are at work. See, we humans are interactive in nature and that physical element has always been a very core component of our lives. Physical interactions have always been valued over calls or messages or whatever, especially in, a, in this very creative environment of ours. Uh, you know, we need this, this coming together. We need to come together, think together. You can get things done, you can get so many things done in such a short time rather than, you know, taking hours. And that can be really frustrating. Now, for these reasons, you can definitely see why work from home impacts career growth. Thank you. Thank you, Ranjit. And some very interesting points that you brought up there, especially about the lack of clear separation between work and home, and also the role that tech plays, uh, the very intrusive role that tech now plays in our lives, which has actually increased uh, with work from home. So thank you to all, all our debaters for their opening statements. This concludes round one. And now we move on to round two, where each debater gets two minutes, two minutes of uninterrupted time to address the points made by the opposing team. Uh, please also note, uh, you know, this for the audience, we are also opening up for Q&A. So if you have any questions to ask our panelists, uh, please use the Q&A option that you would now see at the bottom uh, of your screen. A, a special note for the participants from Fingen, please note that uh, we are today going live with Infopark, so we have a larger audience than usual, so please do not ask any fingent specific questions, but go ahead and feel free to ask. You can also ask questions anonymously if you so wish to. All right, so now let's move on to round two, rebuttals. We will continue in the same order. So Tony, the screen is yours. Thank you, Deepo. So two of the you know, strongest points by my fellow colleagues uh, from the opposing team have been around uh, essentially collaboration and building relationships. You know, like uh, Deepu mentioned, I work within the sales team. Uh, I have been with Finjan for close to a, almost a decade now. And it is a fact that 90% of the clients that we have right now, we have not met them face to face even a single time. And uh, the rest, you know, the 10%, we probably have met with them, uh, you know, max of five times, um, not more, I, I, I assume, like, you know, most of the scenarios. But even so, my colleagues here from the opposing team who would, you know, side with me on this, that 
even with all that, we still have built wonderful, long lasting relationships with these clients that is overflowing with mutual trust. We have been able to brush off our culture onto them. And they, they, we are in a situation where they are, you know, more than just clients, you know, some of them, you know, I mean, some of my clients, I actually share a great bond with them. And, you know, we are even connected on WhatsApp, you know, just imagine that. And we have not, you know, seen each other, you know, face to face, even a single time. So if someone tells me that, well, you know, if someone is working remotely uh, and if my team members are working remotely, um, I, I can't develop relationships or I can't, uh, uh, you know, bond with them or it's difficult to collaborate. I think that's a very lazy excuse. If we can build those relationships with our clients, then we can do that for our employees as well. I mean, we all we have to look is look at is, you know, what is working, right? So with our clients, we have a very transparent uh, way of working. They know what exactly we are doing. We have the right policies in place. We have the right processes, methodologies. And most importantly, you know, uh, we are able to practice empathy. And, you know, that is all that is, you know, needed. So if you bring that in, whatever, uh, you know, negatives that you say, like, you know, collaboration and uh, relationship building, that should not be a problem. It's, it's about changing with the wind and, you know, essentially uh, looking up you know, new methodologies and new ways. So yeah, you know, uh, work from home is, is, you know, definitely works. Thank you, Tony. So Joe, the screen is yours. Thank you, Deepu. Um, I heard Alphonse from my opposing team talking about diversity and inclusion. Even though I agree with you uh, for a few points, I have concerns with respect to gender equality in India. According to National Family Health Survey, only 32 percentage of Indian married women aged between 15 to 49 are employed compared to 98 percentage of married men in the same age group. Women remain as the primary caregiver of a family. And I know a lot of women who had to leave their jobs during pandemic due to the increased family responsibilities. With huge career gap, they may find it difficult to come back to work again. So where is career progression here? For them, career came to a standstill. It's, it is sad to say that female labor force participation has always remained lesser than 25% for several decades, and it'll take many more years to change. So Alphonse, I'm sorry I disagree with you on these points. Thank you, Sujo. Alphonse, the stage is now yours. Thanks, Deepu. So um, uh, while I was listening to Lenzit and Sujo on a few points that both of them are raising, I have thought a few things that I would like to oppose on. One thing, Sujo, that you mentioned in the initial statements that you mentioned, one P is about presence, right? Um, well, lack of visibility in the office cannot be interpreted as lower commitment and effort. Are we not unconsciously favoring a proximity bias here and agreeing to the common notion that out of sight, out of mind. It's also favoring an environment that is fear driven and is of low trust. I think we have been stuck in this border for long now and right now is the right time to do less of it and maybe rather try new techniques that actually favors growth. What we need for a better development is an autonomous work environment that is built on trust, respect, integrity, and a culture of accountability and not the one on fear. Uh, second thing that I think both of you have mentioned is about mentoring and collaboration for people who are in early stage of career. I agree with you there and strongly believe that a good mentoring is most crucial when you are in early stage of career. And I also believe in that additional responsibility when you yourself as a mentor on giving good mentoring to your mentors. But is that something that you cannot can do only in person? No, right? A good LMS can definitely help you deliver the same quality and effectiveness. Uh, previously, I also listened to a manager who was worried about the consistency with the deliver learning and how it affects growth of people who they are mentoring and was deliberately exploring the way to put a good LMS into use. So uh, I definitely don't feel these are things that is a parameter whether work from home is good for career growth or not. Thank you, Alphonse. Ranjit, the stage is yours. Yeah. So a couple of points I wanted to just discuss. So uh, Tony mentioned about, you know, shouldn't we value what we do rather than, you know, where we're you know, doing it from? Uh, yes, it definitely matters where we're doing it from because, yes, you know, we have built relationships with clients over calls, but wouldn't we meet a client 
given the opportunity definitely we would and we have been doing it everyone does that given the opportunity we do meet them because meeting people uh, in person face to face interaction it allows us to build trust so much easier we have built trust over calls but that is so much of extra effort we need to put so much of extra effort to build that relationship and build that trust which can easily be done by you no know, meeting face to face and uh, you know th- that is the reason why your students are going back to classes in the physical classes because you get to learn and understand things so much better than just looking at a computer screen for throughout the day same reason why toastmasters are getting their members back into the clubs have physical interactions because online discussion has its limits i think there are several examples and similarly even in the it industry being able to interact with people is a lot of value you know there's a recent survey by the azum prem ji university where it highlighted how students have lost the ability to recall basic mathematical concepts due to physical you know absence of physical classes a lot of studies around this so where they are definitely matters another point that i just wanted to touch base on was that the gulfons mentioned about inclusivity the fun see being inclusive doesn't mean hiring people just because we are we're forced to work from home that is not being inclusive being inclusive means being able to do that even when everyone's working from office all the disabilities doesn't mean they cannot travel to work giving those people the opportunity to come to work interact with people isn't that the most way the best way to be more inclusive then those are the couple of points in the short time that i have i can address so yeah thank you sure thanks a lot ranjit and thank you to all our thank you to all our panelists for the opening statements and also for the rebuttals we now move on to a third round where our panelists can interact directly and also where we take um questions to our panelists i just want to start by you know through a question from the audience and also which relates to one of the points that um, that you know that was made during the during the opening statements which was uh, so there's a question from sachin who says uh, how has work from home impacted an employee's efforts uh, to be recognized or would it go unnoticed is the visibility of an employee's effort adversely affected while working from home um so tony or alfons i would like to maybe take that to you first um will good work get noticed if you are not in office um, yeah alfons if you want to take that yeah sure, sure yeah. okay uh thanks david for putting it to that question i think i have already stated that in one of my um, the previous rebuttal that i had um i would strongly say this about favoring proximity bias because as i said before lack of visibility cannot be interpreted as low commitment lack of visibility cannot be seen uh, said as uh, their effort or effort is not recognized or they are not getting recognition right so it is about um, i think as an environment as an industry it is about favoring proximity bias and we shouldn't be there um, second thing i think as um, the question rightly says um, whether you are at home whether you are at office your recognition should be your effort should be recognized properly and what we all need is an environment not of fear but an environment of capability driven an environment which is autonomously driven yeah but alfons we are not living in a perfect world <laughs> uh, no, all right so so maybe maybe you know i saw that sujo raised her hands first sujo why don't you why don't you come in yeah yeah alfons had asked me this question earlier to on face to face proximity bias right Uh, Alphonse, uh, there is no bias. Organization, good organizations value and respect employees and their contributions, no matter where you're working from. But it is human nature to pay attention to what is directly in front of front of us. So, Alphonse, if you if I ask you to touch your chin, you may follow me and touch your forehead. That is the power of visuals. Remember that sixty per sixty five percentage of communication. happens through non verbal cues and only 35% happens through voice and words familiarity and regular face to face communication tend to increase acceptance and trust and appreciation so uh, it doesn't diminish the work or the acceptance but it is just a human tendency to give attention 
um, to people who are around us in front of us in directly directly collaborating with us that is the uh, point that i wanted to make such an and so, of course sure so 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 just summing up from what both of you have said looks like of course there is something to do with work culture where do you really you know um, if you work in a place where getting noticed is not the criteria for career development but instead it is the work that you do and the outputs and the outcomes that you deliver that are the criteria for you know that is ideal but then again human beings being human beings we are fallible i mean there is um, you know much as we try to avoid proximity bias we cannot completely avoid it so i think we can leave that there and um, you know and, uh, and and go on to another question uh, you know there's an anonymous question from our audience uh, there's one person asking uh, don't you think work from home you know after work from home was initiated uh, people are able to manage their work better uh, and hence their careers better because there is no time limit um, so jo and ranjit maybe i'll come to you first yeah, yeah. so uh, do you want to go ahead ranjit yeah so you know i think the the answer is there within that also you know uh, being able to manage work better as they don't have a time limit we have been you know people have been talking about how work from home uh, you know makes it less stressful for people but if you don't have a time limit if you can't differentiate that boundary between work and home if you can't set that you know time separation how does the stress reduce and when you become more flexible yes you know everyone can try and become more flexible but what about your teammates you're putting someone else in stress so it becomes a little it's a little more flexible but then you are not confining yourself to your work hours and to your you know personal hours you keep mixing both and that is exactly what is causing stress statistics over the last two years have shown that you know people are unable to differentiate between work and life the boundary is thinning the more they work from home so not really um tony or alphonse would you like to respond to that um yeah yeah sure so um see when when we are you know working from home right like uh, talking about uh you know uh the the boundaries and um you know how there's no differentiation so let me give you an example now i have a, a two and a half year kid at home right uh and yeah ironically i'm 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 supporting work from home or it's saying that it's it's good for your career development but i'm at office today now i i keep worrying like okay you know has my kid eaten how is he now and and, and so on but let me tell you something um when i'm working from home i can manage both right i can manage my kid in between i can take care of my work yes you know instead of 9 to 5 i probably work between 9 to 10 you know but i i think i'm still at a much a uh, better you know place from a mental perspective because then i'm not stressed about what's you know going on at my home you know i i'm managing you know both so there are people who find it difficult but i think it's just a matter of time because we are not used to these things you know but we but tony tony you you're forced mm-hmm. to do two things at a time you're doing your work and your personal things at the same time which is most stressful if you know, I- were working from office and if you could make arrangements to take care of your family and you could separate both out you know it's it's going to be less stressful you only need to focus on your work you can be, be better at your work and you can be less stressful so not really i mean you know you you can't really uh, get your kid to some tony let me talk from uh, you know women's experience or uh, you know I, i have seen a few women who are impacted uh, you know especially young mothers you know when you have when you are at home and you have small children they come and cling to the mothers and or, or there are a lot of distractions with home chores so you get distracted you may give priority to the family responsibilities first and then your work gets accumulated you stretch in the night to finish your work or you stretch in the weekend to finish your work so you don't have boundaries you are stressing too much and maybe senior members uh, not, mature not members start. may be able to do that <laughs> that is because they are experienced and they have seen how work has to be structured and maybe they are able to really plan their work in such cases senior members may be able to do because they have seen how work works so uh, mm-hmm. let, let me just come in here so i think i think we are talking in the larger context of work life integration and how you manage that but i also want to take this opportunity to segue into something that is you know something that's uh, really important and something that came up uh during the opening statements which was uh inclusivity and obviously you know diversity and inclusivity have been big on our agenda for a while now now sujo you um made a very interesting statement you said that uh, and 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 perhaps that's what you were explaining right now as well 
So you said that uh, for working women, especially in India, um, you know, work from home has not been good. And uh, it, it is in fact detrimental or it has in fact even stopped the careers of women. W would, you, would you care to go a little bit more down that road, please? Um, in my case, at least, you know, I'm... And, and, and Tony and Alphonse, I would request you to respond once Sujo is done with us. Thank you. Yeah, sure. uh, so I'm not saying because I am from Fingent. I was not impacted much with work from home because our office was open all the time, except for very limited time when the government declared lockdown, maybe one or two weeks or so. Otherwise, our office was open and I was able to you know, work from office and I, I had that clear segregation of work. Um, you know, and family time. So I could come to the office and um, and then go back home and then have that family time. So I was not impacted much because the office was open here for us. And then whoever wanted to come and work, uh, our office was open. So, you know, but I have seen a lot of women or a lot of people who are impacted because they were enclosed in the four walls of their room. Um, that was That was horrible for a lot of people. Um, Tony or Alphonse, yeah. uh, would, you, would you like to respond to um, work from home in the context of uh, inclusivity? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think it's only fair that uh, the lady from my, you know, our, our team should respond to that, uh, share her you know, own experience, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so, Joe, you know, almost what have you said regarding um, thinning boundaries, learning of line between work and life, yes, it is stressful, right? Um, for a while, I have been thinking about it, prioritizing work, prioritizing family, prioritizing friendship, prioritizing learning. I would say even the thought of that expectation makes me much stressful than doing it really. So I'm not even sure if you put together all the 24 hours I have in a day to complete all these tasks, I wouldn't be able to. So it is equally stressful for me as well. So that's personally, I have never feel connected uh, to all these balance, uh, keeping up to that expectation of balance. But I think the more realistic way to approach that is about keeping that work-life rhythm. And the last two years in work from home and all the benefits that uh, this flexibility that has provided us all with is about how you actually practice work-life rhythm, right? Let's say for in a day, in a week, um, a day one. But, but also, would keep, that's that's why I would keep women, prior women in India have been women in India have been finding it difficult to find that the, the rhythm that you speak because see in this culture in the Indian culture you know women are expected to you know be be the primary giver. They are expected to do everything. And that's exactly where they've been struggling. You know, when, when they're working from home, they are expected to do all the, you know, all the things at home also. Right, then, which then, have been extremely then, is that actually work from home? Culture is not something that is going to change so work just because cannot be in this equation then, right? Alphonse, so, Alphonse, so, at one point, so you were not let, able let, to let prioritize. I think one so, point, so in the, she was in not able to. Of, um, in the interest of civil discourse, let me, let, let me come in here. <laughs> All right. So I think I think our audience has heard good points uh, from both sides on this on this very important topic. Uh, in the interest of time, I would also like to you know shift or, or at least bring up another topic that's um, you know that's been mentioned uh, and and that's been talked about a lot, which is coaching and and mentoring. Um, now, um, Sujo and Ranjit, you indicated that for coaching and for mentoring, it was you know face to face time is important. Um, so Tony and Alphonse. Uh, is, is, is it not correct that we need face-to-face -face time for coaching and mentoring and to bring up uh, juniors or even for senior folks? Um, you know, what, what, how do you respond to that argument? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that because, you know, uh, with, you know, in my experience with Fingent, I've been training, uh, you, know, you know, guys fresh out of college, right? So, uh, so, so I, I think I'm the right person to respond to that. So see, um, you know, in, in all the training that I have done, I've tried, you know, uh, different types of training, sitting with them and explaining versus giving them tasks and helping, you know, or have them figure out. What I've learned is from a career perspective, people start getting uh, the sense of ownership and accountability when you let them make their own decisions. You know, sitting with them, being in their, you know, personal space, you know, just going all the time and, hey, what's up, what's up? You know, just checking, you know, what's going on. That doesn't give them that, uh, you know, flexibility. That just stresses them out. So it's Dude, very... That, that's bad leadership. Not, not, it's not a problem with... Hey, guy, uh, you know, let, let, let me finish. 
Uh, right, no, let's, it's, let's, it's, allow Tony, let's allow Tony to finish. To, Tony, go ahead. And yeah. Correct. So, um, uh, see, so there it, it's not about like, you know, how close you are there, you know, sitting next to the person. It's about, you know, the process, like, you know, you have to define the clear, you know, KPIs, the clear expectations of what needs to be done, what we think or what as a team you think like where the person can be right uh, with respect to the training and uh, the milestones in the next you know uh, coming weeks or months or whatever so then you give them that space to learn come back to you with their result do their own research you know things like that that helps them to really go forward in their career in a much faster pace now there are people who uh, you know sit next to you know the the guys so that the training process can be faster and they can be you know productive very soon but i think that hurts those you know uh, young employees in 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 the long run because then you're spoon feeding information to them and you're spoon feeding and helping them just solve their problems right and you you don't let them solve their own problems so that's not that's not good in a way and obviously irrespective of whether you work from home or from office it doesn't matter it's about the process so you you know seeing them all the time it doesn't matter at all that that's my experience yeah go ahead tony uh, uh, sorry ranjit um, point you yeah. yeah so i i absolutely agree with tony here because he's talking about you know being a bad leader or a you know bad mentor everything that he spoke about is about micromanaging and being a bad leader that can be done even even via a phone call or a chat you know i can keep calling my you know calling my team members and you know asking them what's up what's up you know what's happening have you done it so that's all about being a bad leader you know being a good then, leader why, why do you need to be at doing, office if you can do that you know on the phone exactly that's what i'm coming to so if you're at office and when you can monitor the work without even interrupting them you have the ability to know what's going on see what's going on without actually interrupting their work when you are miles apart you don't have that you have to pry into their work to see what is going on how else do you know when you're next to each other you know what's going on you get a sense of what's going on especially a mentor or leader has that experience to be able to sit back and see what's going on and that gives that extra that you, you're talking about snooping no. into their work so without me, them knowing no, so no, 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 no. let me let me bring in one more the, So, Sir Ranjit and Tony, let me let let me bring in one more person in here. So, Alphonse, you, I mean, you're obviously responsible for learning and development at Finjin. So, what do you feel about, um, you know, about coaching and mentoring and learning at Finjin? Yeah. Uh, so, I think um, you know most of the discussions I think uh, I have been listening to is more around how does in-person collaboration, how does that proximity help you win better learning, right? But then I think I would reiterate it again. Uh, is it that something that a good LMS cannot solve, a good tool or a better technique cannot solve? Because even at Finjan, I have seen now managers increasingly using LMS, increasingly exploring ways how LMS can be put into a into use in their day to day learning there are managers curating courses for their department these are not courses that is available elsewhere but they curate courses for their departments because they wanted to give that uh, individual they wanted to respect that individual differences they wanted to impart those learnings in their curating courses so is that something that a good lms or a good technique or a you know better learning on how to manage these individual differences how to manage without these physical barriers a good a good lms can solve right so uh, so maybe LMS i can is... i can bring that maybe i can bring that back i mean so obviously at finjent when we went uh, remote so we used infins and skillek our own tools uh, to help us here our own people development platforms to help us here um, so sujay and ranjit uh, the point that alphonse is trying to make is that okay so you can have courses you can curate courses and deliver courses uh, through people development platforms um you know and you can use channels like infins to make a difference here uh, is that alone enough see lms is lms has been around lms has been come about in the last two years it's been around for the better part of the decade if lms is lms was the holy grail you know we would have long passed you know moved on to uh, online learning only which is not the case even today organizations that are much much more larger uh, you know the, the largest organizations even are investing into infrastructure where people can come together and have that creative thought process and discuss because that is the best way of learning schools even even online you know even uh, organizations or you know um, institutions that specific, uh, specifically did online training only 
are actually investing into physical locations today to get people together because that is the best way of you know teaching so no it, it is it is a proven method where this is a proven method and if online learning was the holy grail i think you know we wouldn't have any offline learning anymore which is obviously not the case i have one more point uh, too uh, you know now today we are talking about the career progression right and how fast can we do that so yes lemus can do that but you know when you look at the average age of an indian it is 28.4 and we are an amazingly young country with so much energy and i don't want our youngsters youngsters to be confined to the four walls of their rooms and learn from home then you can collaborate with each other innovate and transform the world so when we talk more about the career progression of the it professionals yes you can learn online but that is going to be really slow so when you see your seniors explaining things you know along with all of this that is going to be a faster progression don't you want to take over the world do you want to drag when you have such youth in india compared to the whole world which is aging the india has that uh, you know youthfulness so let us utilize that and then ensure that the career growth for it professionals is uh you know made fast track to with all possible ways so you know being humans we need collaboration we need to observe each other and we need to um you know do it as soon as possible as fast as possible and bring in the transformation that is what uh, i want to say yes um, so, so I, functional I, training can be done online you know it is it is possible but so 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 sorry big one i love you to i love you to complete and then maybe we can go to alphonse sure sure so yeah i was just saying see functional training can be done online to an extent but you know leadership you know being able to grow into a leadership role which which a lot of people aspire to be you know how do you teach that online that comes from you know face to face interactions experiences and you know watching and learning different people from different aspects coming together and doing it so yeah you know it is it is not an lms doesn't teach everyone everything so so folks i think the point that is being made here is that you know while lms are useful uh leadership skills and uh, skills related to personality and character development we might not be able to completely uh train people uh online and perhaps face to face is required or at least being in an environment with others is required um what what do you think uh people i would uh, also say few points in the question that you posed but then before that i think i was listening to sujivan rajit mentioning about um, in person collaboration how um, learning style especially when you are in young stage are we also generalizing learning styles and learning patterns of everyone out there can you say somebody in young age only prefers in person collaboration and in person learning no right learning style styles and learning patterns are different for each and i think deepu you also mentioned the same in in a question that you had we were especially for uh, people in senior manage uh, mid manager level or aspiring for leadership roles how does learning differ for them right see there are people in different stages of career learning and practice in learning in different styles we have seen mid manager levels most effective is observational learning they do observe the now at observation again doesn't have to be in person okay it ha- can happen how you deal with a problem how you uh, behave in a particular situation observations can happen anywhere it doesn't have to be in person so i don't think so we should generalize learning there and uh, can never so say I think, that i i think what we are really concluding here is to say that okay while technology is important and you know i think everyone agrees on that uh there is also um uh, you know there's also learning that happens before technology now um you know now we are about to get into um you know the last round of this debate which is the closing statements uh and while the closing statements are on and by the way you know this is the closing statements are a last opportunity for our debaters uh to swing the vote to swing your vote the audience's vote uh in their favor Uh, but while the while the closing statements are on we will also be opening up uh the the final poll where you know you can cast your votes and you can indicate whether um you agree with the statement that work from home is not good for the career development of it professionals or whether you disagree or whether you're still undecided so let's move on to the closing statements one minute uninterrupted for each participant to make a final appeal to the audience and this time we go in reverse order so alphonse uh, the stage is yours sure um so i think with all 
while listening to Sujo Rajit points made by uh, Tony as well, I think I would conclude by saying, I think it shouldn't be about whether work from home has impacted our careers or not, but then the way it is managed and executed, the way we practice and follow the model. So as uh, both of them, my opposing team has rightly spotted, yes, there are limitations and challenges, but there is possibility to change these into advantages and harness its benefits. And in the new world of work, I would also believe empathy, a sense of engagement, the emotional intelligence factor will be the attributes that characterize winning teams compared to the traditional beliefs and the traditional working models we had. So that's how I would conclude my statement. Thank you, Alphonse. Uh, Ranjit, the state is yours. So, so I, I think I'll just keep it, keep this uh, short, and I'll just go back to my opening statement. Uh, you know, where I mentioned about us being stuck in this in this tunnel vision of uh, work from home having only advantages. It's so not the case. You know, we need to uh, we need to see or realize the massive disadvantages also that there there are a lot of good points have been made here today. And, um, and, you know, it is, it is important that we, you know, the seasoned veterans, the, 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 the seniors, the leaders, you know, recognize that and uh, realize that working from home is not for everyone. There is a lot that people are going to lose. They recognize that and understand that. And let me just, just, just leave you uh, with this thought. I can send across a learning course on how internet works, you know, anyone. Would you learn everything from that particular YouTube link or that course, or would you understand and learn better if there was someone with you, physically with you, teaching and helping out there? Just think about that and think about that, and I think you will have your answer. Thank you. Thank you, Ranjit. Um, Tony, the screen is yours. Yeah, thanks, Dibu. Uh, so nice, you know, good points, you know, made by the opposing team. Uh, but, you know, I absolutely have no doubt that work from home inculcates, fosters, and encourages ownership, accountability, decentralized decision making, and problem solving, which are the pillars when it comes to um, you know progressing with your career uh, and and being better at your job. And obviously, you're doubling up uh, with you know the time saved uh, from you know working from home and not being able to you know not having to commute and things like that. That is reinvested in into your own self uh, helps in you know skilling up and and learning you know forward. Uh, but obviously, as a as opposing team said, there are some uh, you know shortcomings. I would rather say perceived shortcomings um, that that were raised by the opposing team. But I don't see any of them uh, being long term you know problems. And nothing is out there that cannot be resolved uh, you know by having the right HR policies, the right operational processes, and obviously training the leaders to be, you know, that's the most important thing, training the leaders to be empathetic and to be biased towards output and value rather than, you know, uh, being proximity biased. Uh, let me, you know, leave you with this, you know, statement. Um, let the employees be judged by what they do, then, you know, from where or how they do it. Thank you. Uh, Sujo, the screen is yours. Thank you, Dipu. We all have seen that children got back to school this year and they are much happier compared to the last two years. I am a mother of two kids and I have seen them, the difference in them already. They were dull, they did not have a lot of friends. And now they are so happy. They are with uh, you know a lot of people, a lot of friends. So, you know, we have seen the difference in children already and they have proved it. So why is this hesitation for millennials and Gen Z to get back to office? Won't it affect their long-term career progression? One benefit of face-to-face -face proximity at office is that it reinforces the sense that you share a common mission. When people feel connected to the mission of the organization, it improves their overall satisfaction with work. So let me repeat, career development is a lifelong process. So please do not lose your focus with a few short-term benefits of work from home. Thank you. A big thank you to all our panelists for the audience. Our poll is still open. Remember that it is a team with the greatest swing in votes that wins today. But irrespective of who wins or loses, I would like to thank all our debaters today for an excellent discussion as you dissected this topic from all different perspectives. 
Um, you know, our goal with these debates is to start in some small way forums where we can have civil discussions on topic like this, on topics like this. So I thank you all. And uh, I know that some of you argued perspectives that are different from your pers from your personal views as well. So thank you for doing that, and thank you for representing uh, something that you actually disagree with. So and that you know, it's one thing to speak about what you agree with, but it's another to talk about a topic that you might not agree with as much. So thank you so much. Um, I would also like to thank the folks from InfoPark, especially uh, Chinchu and Jyoti, who helped us conduct this and who helped us reach out to a much wider audience than before. Um, and uh, looks like we have the results from the Sharanya, do we have the final results from the poll? Yes, we have the final results. All right, so let's end, end the suspense okay. and... Okay. All right, so looks like for today's poll, we have a clear winner. There was a clear swing in votes. In fact, both teams did well. Both teams were able to change minds. But the team that changed more minds was the one um, that agreed with the statement that permanent work from home is not good for the career development of IT professionals. I thank once again our debaters for today. I thank you, Sharanya, for organizing this. I thank you, Chinchu and Jyoti as well. And a big thank you to all people in the audience who took time out to participate with us in this debate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.